Uh, I'm Soledad O'Brien, and I'm a journalist. I've been one for about 30 years. But today I want to talk about a project that I am an executive producer on, which is the What Works Media Project. I am Mikola Beardsley, and I'm a documentary producer. And I am also an executive producer on What Works Media. I'm very excited to be here with my partner. And um, crime. And crime, <laughs> exactly. Tell me why. You brought What Works Media Project to, to us, to me. What, what made it so compelling for you? What was that first kernel of the idea that made you think like, ah, oh, this is what we should be doing? Well, I think it's what a lot of people feel, which is when I look out across my media landscape, I'm not hearing about solutions. So when I came across the work of Results for America that was focused on solutions, and this was a really important part to me, a bipartisan coalition around solutions, I thought, okay, this might be a salve. I mean, basically, it just made me feel better to think about it. Um, I also had learned about David Bornstein's work in those, because this is about a year and a half ago or so. I had learned about David Bornstein's work, Solutions Journalism Network, and really inspired by what they were doing. You know, the co-founder, Courtney Martin, who's a wonderful essayist. and. Um, I knew I wanted to be in the solutions telling space. In fact, I was calling this the solutions project um, to myself uh, only um, at the beginning. And um, it eventually evolved into this other name. And um, so I reached out to Results for America, um, to Michelle Jolin, and said, you know, I really admire the work that you're doing. Do you think that you could use documentary storytelling. Could that be a tool in this work? And she agreed, and she thought I was nuts that I would think we could make these films interesting. And I said, I'm not sure that we can, but I think we can try. And no, we can. We'll, we'll do it. We'll, we'll, we'll make them interesting. So what made you responsive to my outreach? You know, I think over the years I've had people come to me and instead of calling it solutions, have said things like, we should just do a show that's just good news or we're going to do a positive story. And I've always kind of hated that um, because I felt that it was manipulative of what you want the audience to walk away with. I mean, I don't think of stories as positive stories or negative stories. I think they're, they're well done stories or not well done stories. And so what I found compelling about it was it was just about what what's working. I mean, the agenda was to, to look deeply at a process. And then I really like data. Mm -hmm. I'm not a data journalist, but I really like narrative stories that are laid on top of lots of data and lots of studies and even social experiments that are mm -hmm. very eye-opening. Mm -hmm. And to kind of take one person's journey, but through their journey, really elevate all that data. And so I thought, oh, this is a really great way to do that. And and it seems like the timing was right because in a way, certainly cable news was getting like just people screaming at each other. I mean, God, imagine if you sat in on one of those and said, maybe there's a solution. I mean, like right, people, right, literally right. they'd stop for a minute and then they'd be like, let's just keep screaming at each other. Right, and, and I thought, right. oh, this could be really interesting. Uh, I remember years ago when, when I was reporting on Hurricane Katrina and we had, we would go in for like, about a month at a time and then be swapped out by our co-anchors. So I worked with a guy named Miles O'Brien and he'd come in and I'd go home to my family. So we were leaving at a Baton Rouge airport and we we're disgusting because we hadn't changed our clothes and you know, Katrina then was just all mud. It was just ugh, really dirty. We were living on the floor of an RV. And, um, and I was wearing a CNN baseball cap and we walked through the Baton Rouge airport and I remember everybody stood up and gave us a standing ovation. And they gave us a standing ovation. I felt like we were doing exactly what journalists were supposed mm -hmm. to be doing, right? Mm -hmm. We were in this service. Right. They felt yeah. like, oh my gosh, thank yeah. you for right. delivering something to us that we really needed. Yeah. It wasn't that, yo, your reporting was amazing. And it was, it was like, you gave us something that we needed that yeah. what we couldn't have gotten without you journalists. Right. And it made me really feel like, wow, the journalist role should be that, right? Yeah. We should be serving people in, in some way and not in a you know, Pollyanna kind of way, but like doing good reporting that people can tease out something of value out of that. So that was really compelling to me. What's been the hardest part, do you think? For me right now, the hardest part is <laughs> what Gerilyn described the documentary uh, filmmaker as, as a social innovator who is, a, it's a startup, you know? Um, you have an idea, you um, keep doubting it because that's what you do with any idea because you have to t take it apart and put it back together. And so, you know, until you, you, you build a certain amount of confidence about it and then you go out and you tell other people about it and you see what they say. And 
and then you recruit people and you have to find money and you have to, you know, organize a coalition and it's, you know, it's a lot of balls in the air, really. I mean, um, so I would say right now, the hardest part, because it's at the beginning, is uh, not giving into any doubt about it. Like, I believe in it and I know it's going to happen and I have to work at keeping doubt out because I feel like I, I, I'm prone to be skeptical and so I, I just bring that. Oh, I just gosh, bring it that. It seems so obvious to me. I mean, not I'm obvious so like, oh, I, I right. thought of this idea 500 times. More like, oh my God, that's a genius idea. Yes, definitely. <laughs> like, I don't, I have zero, zero doubt, doubt about it. Okay, okay, good. I mean, well, it just seems like perfect time for an idea and, a, and, a, and an audience okay. that I think is really hungry. We don't for... have to have the therapy session part yeah. in the video. <laughs> I love the therapy session. And listen, I'm not cheap. That's going to be $150. Right. Are you covered by insurance? Right. <laughs> um, but I actually, <laughs> we're getting way off the rails now. But I actually really thought like right now, especially I'm post election, yeah. Yeah. where I think people are just so angry and feel very divided and yeah. very unhappy and divided from their neighbor. Yeah. Right? Like they yeah. literally look over there like, I hate you, my neighbor, because you don't oh, see things politically yeah, yeah. how I see things. I really feel like, wow, this could bring people together because a solution is not a partisan thing, right? It's not about a win for this group, but but a loss for this group. It really is about how do you make a community win yeah. with great data yeah. and making sure that at the end of the day, yeah. you're, you're saving resources, right? That's yeah, like yeah, everyone, right. Can, cheer everyone can cheer for that. Everyone can cheer for that. So everyone. I think it's a really good time and hopefully will be healing for people. You know, that you can I focus love, on something else at, other than, you know, let's let's argue over some political debate. You know, I think what it is, I mean, this is just me being totally honest and not like, you know, polished about it. But I think part of it is just because I am so, we all are so inundated with problems uh, right now that I, I'm wondering, I, I know this is where I want to go, but then I'm wondering, well, what else should I be doing? I think that's part of it, like post-election. It's just, just like no. I think it's you a know, platform. like am I? And I know I am because everyone, right. my all my near and dear parents, husband, best friends are like, no, no, no. no I that. just, but I keep. That's the doubt part. That's no, all. no, no. Like, I think it, yeah. I think it's actually much bigger. I know when we were talking about it on the panel, it was sort of like thirty minute piece, and I thought, oh my goodness, no, this is at every single length. Right. right, because what my sixteen-year-old right. daughter is going to watch yeah. is going to be very different than what a policymaker is interested in seeing, and going to have a very different focus. Yeah, and what someone who's on their headphones in the subway is going to, you know, want to take a look at is going to be very, very different than someone who settles into a theater. Right. To so watch a documentary. So we need to do like short. a map of all of our audiences yeah. and chart yeah. the ways to them. I mean, yeah. use data yeah. to set up our data. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've covered our yeah. conversation. Yeah.